Let's examine how we can create a list of names that when clicked will launch an email to that person. So maybe we have a list of sales reps with their sales in descending order. And if I have a question for that person, I'd like to be able to take my mouse and click on that person's name and have it automatically start an email message with that person's email address automatically populated in the to field. I'll also show you how we can integrate this email icon into their name. So let's get started. Make sure you download this file from the link in the video description so you can follow along with me as well as to be able to open up the solution file and see how everything was created. We begin with a data set that shows the sales rep's full name, their email address, and their sales. I've already taken this one step further and created an explicit measure that totals up the sales. Even though we're not going to be doing any aggregations, it's just good practice not to use implicit measures. Going over to the report view, I've built a table that just added each of the fields from the data source, the full name, the email address, and the explicit measure for total sales. I want to be able to click on one of these email addresses and have it automatically start a new email and place that email address in the to field. Email addresses by their nature are not clickable. If we were to go over to the data panel and click on the email address field, the data category is currently set to uncategorized. If we change that to web URL, even though that's not a website address, it is a URL of a type. So let's see if we can use it just by making that change. I'll close my build panel and open up my customization. With the table selected, we'll go down to cell elements, and then in the series dropdown, we'll change this to email address. Now before I had made that change, I don't know if you noticed this or not, I'll go back to full name. Web URL was a selectable link. But if I go to the email address field, I lose that option. Let's go back up to the data category, click on email address, and we'll change this from URL back to uncategorized. Now if we go back to format, cell elements, scroll down, web URL is now active. So the data category for web URL is basically for HTTP and HTTPS style addresses. Without an address prefix, Power BI doesn't know that these are actually email addresses. We need that HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, mail to, one of those types of address prefixes. And without it, these are not going to be clickable. Now I could go into something like Power Query and concatenate a mail to colon prefix in front of every one of these email addresses. But I don't wish to see mail to colon in front of every one of my email addresses. So we're going to do a little trick. Let's go back to the table view and we're going to create a new column that concatenates mail to colon to all of these email addresses. We'll then use that as the underlying URL link for each of these email addresses that are shown in the report view. So let's go create a new column. The name of this column we'll call the email link and will be equal to, and we're going to use the concatenate function because what we'll do is we'll concatenate a hard coded mail to colon comma, and then I'll type in single quote to get a list of all my tables and their fields. And we're going to concatenate mail to to the existing email addresses. Close parentheses, enter. Now I don't want to see the email link as a selectable option in my report. So I'll go over here to the right next to email link and I'm going to hide this field. It will still be selectable, it just won't be visible in the list. So going back to the report view, if we click on data, we don't see the email link field as a usable option in a visual. But let's go to format, cell elements, with email address selected, I'm going to choose web URL, and now it wants to know which field do I look at for the actual email address URL. I don't want to use email address, so I'm going to go into the list of fields and choose email link. Hit OK. Now you can see all of the typical underscores for a clickable item. So hovering over this, if the user were to click this, it's actually going to invoke the mail to colon version of the email address, not what we see displayed on the screen. Now because we're in the development environment to test this out, we have to hold down control, but once published, the user could just click on it without holding down control. So I'll do a control click. Power BI wants to know if it's okay to open up an outside application. I will allow it. And now we see a brand new email with the user's email address in the to field. There is no rule that says you have to put a user's email address in a visual to make it a clickable item. Suppose we only wish to have the user's name in the visual, but still have that be clickable to launch the email to that person. Selecting the table, we'll do just like we did before. We'll go over to Cell Elements, and with full name selected from the series dropdown, we'll just go to Web URL, and then tell it which field in our data model holds the actual email links. Remember, this is the one that has the mail to colon concatenated to the front of it. Hit OK. And now just like before, if I hover, I can see that mail to link embedded beneath the user's name. If I click on it, I get a brand new email with the user's email address in the to field. 
Now it's time for the ultimate version, displaying an email icon to the left of each user's name. And I also want that icon to be clickable so the user can click the name or the icon and it starts a new email message. To do this, we're going to have to go back to the table view and create a new field in our sales data table. So just like we created this email link column, I need to create another column that is the user's full name with an envelope concatenated to the front of it. Now that envelope is an icon, it's a picture. So we're going to use the Windows period trick to activate the Windows emoji library. Because in here I'm certain we can find an emoji of an envelope. So let's close this for now. We'll start by going up to column tools and choosing new column. We'll call this new column icon full name. And it's going to be equal to, and using the same concatenate trick from earlier, instead of typing in static text, we'll do a Windows period, open up the emoji library, and I'm going to go down to the search feature and type in the word mail. So now we can see all the different icons associated with email. Now you can pick any of these that you wish, but I'm going to go ahead with the first one because it also has that at symbol on it. So I'll give that a click. We'll close the emoji library. Now that emoji has to be in double quotes. So I'll go in front of it, put a double quote, go after it, and put a double quote. But I don't want the icon to rest directly against the left side of the user's name. So after the envelope, I'll add a space. This will give us a little visual padding between the icon and the name. So that's our first part of the concatenate, comma. The second part of the concatenate, I'll do a single quote to list all my tables and their fields, and we'll arrow down to the user's full name. Close parentheses, enter. Now we have a version of the display name with the email icon to the left of it. That's what we'll use in the visual, and then use the email link underneath it to actually act as a clickable field. Let's go back to the report view. We'll go into our existing visual, go over to build, We'll take out the existing full name field, add data, and we'll use the icon full name field instead. Now because it was added second, I'll have to take total sales and put it after icon full name, putting it back in the original order. We still need to hook the underlying mail to colon address. So going over to the format section, cell elements, with icon full name selected, we'll go to web URL and tell it that if the user clicks this, we want to go ahead and invoke the email link field. Hit OK. Now they're all underlined. If we hover over a name, we see the underlying mail to address. I'll do a control click because I'm in the testing environment. And now we have a new email with the user's email address in the to field. If it were me, I would also rename this from icon full name to something like username or full name. Hopefully this will provide you with some inspiration to do all sorts of creative things with links. If you come up with a great idea, make sure you put it down in the comments so we can all see what you created. Don't forget to download the file from the link in the video description so you can see all the answers to this. Thank you for watching, and remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.